Well, it's that time. It's that. It's, it, it is actually about that time to uh, start talking about WWE SummerSlam. And, well, the biggest event of the summer, of course, is probably the best event of the summer. Then, well, when you come to WWE, uh, what I've seen for the past several years um, when watching SummerSlam is just an overhyped pay-per-view event that gets let down and boring. And looking at this match card, I, I, I'm pretty let down, actually, and, it, and the pay-per-view didn't even happen. I mean, there's just very minor matches that um, that uh, I'm actually looking forward to. And to be honest, it's things like this that makes me wonder why I still have the WWE Network. But... Well, let's get started. This is off of uh, sportskeeda.com, whatever, whatever it's called, or whatever anybody wants to call it. I mean, I've looked, for, I've looked through um, Bleacher Report, and I've looked through... Um, some other stuff. But this is pretty recent, I guess. So, <sighs> Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. Well, although I've paid no attention to Raw or SmackDown at all for the past month, I could honestly say that I have no idea why Dol uh, Dolph Ziggler is going to go up against Rusev. From what you guys could probably see, you'll be like, oh, Dolph Ziggler is going to beat Rusev, or oh, Rusev is going to beat Dolph Ziggler. I, I know for a fact that Rusev is going to beat Dolph Ziggler. And um, I don't even know why Summer Rae is even there, and I don't know why Lana's Lana I, I I just don't know why but um who knows who really knows but Rusev Dolph Ziggler I don't even care because it's not even for a championship see even the, even my cat is upset about this. Yeah, I know. I know you're upset about Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev, but WWE says that we gotta deal with it. Okay? Moving on. Team Bella versus Team Bad versus Team PCB. No. No sniffing... Okay, number one, what the fuck is this shit? What, what, what in the blue fuck is this shit? Team Bella versus Team... What, what kind of a name is Team Bad? Uh, uh, as I'm told, it's supposed to be... It's supposed to stand for beautiful and dangerous... What the fuck kind of name is that? And where's the Divas Championship supposed to be on the line? I mean, it's been... It's been... It's literally been two months, maybe three, that the Divas Championship has... has yet to even be challenged... 
number one, challenged, and number two, defended. So, what the fuck? I don't even care. No, I'm not even going to predict that match. That'll be my bathroom break for sure. Here's a match that I'm interested in. Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. Now, Cesaro is finally getting the push that he deserves. He got a push, like, maybe two years ago. Supposedly, he was, like... I think he was United States champion for a while. It was either that... He was some champion, I, I, I remember. I, I don't even know. But, um... He was... He had, like, this big freaking push. And they didn't even do anything with Cesaro. And then they just turned him back into a jobber. So, really, I didn't even know what the hell they were even doing with Cesaro. They're, it was like the next best thing next to Daniel Bryan, and then nothing really happened. So, so they're finally kind of pushing Cesaro with putting him against Kevin Owens. And I'm honestly looking forward for this match because I like to see Cesaro win. I, I'm not saying that because I don't like Kevin Owens. I'm saying that because Cesaro needs this win really bad. He needs this win so bad that it would probably save his career if he wins this match. If he if he wins this match, he's probably looking at a future WWE Championship opportunity. Yes, yes, Kitty, I know. He, he is looking for a WWE Championship opportunity or any kind of championship opportunity, to be honest. I am busy recording, goddammit. I will pet you later. <clears throat> so, Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. I'm hoping Cesaro wins, but they might have Kevin Owens win. Now, I'm I'm not really sure why Stephen Amell is in, in this... But, um, <clears throat> and to be honest, I, I don't watch the arrow. I'm being dead serious. I don't watch the arrow and um, I, I just wonder why, why WWE would let him have a match at SummerSlam. That's almost as worse as Justin Bieber wanting to fight John Cena. Hopefully that will never happen or WWE will be ruined forever. But... <clears throat> according to this site... A lot, a lot of people will see this as like... Just another celebrity match that WWE uses to attract mainstream attention. Well, although it is a motive, but, um, hmm. It, it was a motive, but there's actually some proof that Stephen Amell has been training for this match. So, an actor training to fight? I mean, you, you never really see this. When was the last time we ever saw a celebrity trained to f Floyd Mayweather? Maybe. I don't even know. But uh, <laughs> that's the last person that I, I know of, and I didn't even watch that match, mainly because I, I wasn't into WWE um, after WrestleMania 24, or, well, around WrestleMania 24. That was I got into WWE probably after WrestleMania 24. Actually, I'm not even sure if it was Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. I'm not sure. Somebody's going to have to remind me about that. But doesn't matter. Um, what does matter? Stephen M Stephen Amell and Neville versus Stardust and King Barrett. Why not put Stephen Amell in a singles match against Stardust, and then Neville versus Wade Barrett is his real is his original name, but um. I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm getting that feeling that Stephen Amell and Neville might actually win this match. Who knows? I mean, it'd be really interesting to see 
Stardust and Wade Barrett win because who knows, to be honest. I mean, if this goes perfectly well, then Stephen Amell will probably get the win somehow because WWE logic. But it's just SummerSlam. All right, well, primetime players versus Los Manators versus New Day versus Lucha Dragons for the Tag Team Championships. Why? Why does it need to be a fatal four-way? Why not a just a another just regular tag team match? I don't I don't get WWE. I don't get what the hell they're doing. I don't understand what this logic is. I mean, you got all of these. No, actually, no. I'm sorry. These are the only four tag teams in the WWE right now. That is the sad truth. And the New Day isn't even a tag team. The New Day is just a threesome. Los Matadoras is just... I don't even know what the hell Los Matadoras is. I mean, they used to be cool for like one show. That was it. That was really it. And then I don't even know where the hell Lucha Dragons came from. Primetime players, I've always thought that they were cool, but the New Day is just a slap to the face to um, Big E, Kofi, and Xavier. I honestly feel sorry for those three because that's just horrible. Well, I don't even care for this tag team match, but I'm, I'm, I believe that they'll probably have primetime players retain, which I don't really understand the point then for a fatal four way if you're just going to have the same guys retain. It would have been better if you just had, oh, I don't know, the New Day and the primetime I thought were having a little storyline of their own, which would have been interesting if we we got to excuse me if we got to see Biggie and Kofi versus Titus and um god what's his name uh the other guy but um so I mean not only that Los Matadores and and the um, Lucha Dragons have no momentum. They have no reason to be in this match. They were just placed there because they were the, they're they're the only four tag teams in the WWE right now. Four active, I should say. I don't even know where the hell the Ascension is. It would have been nice to see the Ascension somewhere. And, and just... Because they just showed up one day. And now they're not. They're not even here anymore. They went somewhere else. I don't even know where. But, um... Who freaking knows. Randy Orton versus Sheamus. The Celtic Dumbass versus... Randy Orton. Well, I want to say the Celtic dumbass. I mean, he did just cost Randy Orton the um, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But, um... Hmm.
Well... <clears throat> I don't know, to be honest, because this, I, I don't, number one, I don't even care unless something's put on the line. This, this match, I don't even care about because it's just Seamus being heel. And I don't even know what his intentions were to um, beating up Randy Orton. And I don't really care. They didn't really m fix that story. So... I, I don't even know. But it would be nice to put um, Randy Orton versus Sheamus uh, for the Money in the Bank briefcase or something like that. I don't even know. But it would have been nice if you'd used like, the briefcase as like a punishment or something. Or I don't know. Because I've always pictured like maybe... An extra Money in the Bank briefcase match. Not a ladder match, if you get me. But like a singles match um, with uh, the current Money in the Bank winner and then somebody else who just then they don't like each other or whatever the hell the reason is. I mean, I don't know. It's just me personally. I like to see something like that. But um, I, I don't even care for, for this match. I think Sheamus is going to win, though. But I'm pretty sure WWE might might have Randy Randy to win. So again, this is just another filler match. I don't really know. Uh I I don't even care to be honest. Um the White family returns against Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. The somewhat shield versus the White family kind of part 15 now. It's either 50 or 30. It's at, it's at least around that many times that these same two groups or teams have fought against each other. And I mean, for just just first off, WWE is constantly trying to shove down or shove uh, Roman Reigns down our throats. And while I don't even care for Roman Reigns, me personally, I'm a big fan of him. I mean, he sh he he, uh, he should have been the one to win the money or no, not the money, the um, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar, but. The, that's a different story but uh, again WWE is just trying to put him over as babyface or whatever the fuck they're they're doing to him I'm, I'm getting a really bad feeling that they're probably going to turn him heel even though every well when I mean everybody I mean half of the WWE universe hates his ass anyways so um So who knows? There there might be a heel turn tonight. There might be a heel turn or something. I I can't see, um, I can't see Luke Harper turning on Wade ba or Bray Wyatt. Excuse me. I can't I can't see that happening again. So it's either one or the other. It's either Roman Reigns or it's Dean Ambrose that's going to turn heel. So. That, that's my current prediction. If none of those two happen, then it probably won't even be an interesting SummerSlam. I mean, it's already looking to be an uninteresting SummerSlam to begin with. Not to mention that there's a possible... Actually, no, there's a huge rumor going around that Sting's going to show up at SummerSlam. And... I don't know. I mean... There's a huge rumor that he might come out and announce retirement or challenge The Undertaker. 
One of those two is going to happen. Or even both. Who knows? <sighs> but things going to show up at SummerSlam. I don't know when, or I could be lying. Who knows? But um, there's a huge rumor going on that Sting will show up at SummerSlam. I mean, there's no possibility, there's no guarantee that he could show up or that he couldn't. I mean, there, it's just a huge rumor. I mean, there's been rumors going on about The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar happening at SummerSlam. Nobody believed it until he showed up at um, at Battleground and um, kicked the living shit out of Brock Lesnar and then the Raw the next night, which we are about to get to, actually. So, uh, so who knows? Uh, triple Threat, uh, Big Show versus Ryback versus The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. I don't know why this needs to be a Triple Threat match. Originally, originally it was supposed to have been Big Show versus Ryback. <clears throat> but, um... Uh, right back had um, some sort of infection. I think it was like a staph infection in his leg or something. I don't remember what happened, but it was like a pretty it was pretty bad. But he had a injury. He couldn't fight at Battleground, but he's back now. He's going to fight, and now it's going to be a triple threat this time against Big Show and Miz. I'm looking for Ryback to win this one, mainly because he needs to stay champion. He's deserved this champion. And although everybody feels like that he's just holding it for Daniel Bryan, he's not just holding it for Daniel Bryan. I mean, I think Daniel Bryan just needs to maybe retire after this next WrestleMania, depending if he fights or not. But, um... Some, something might happen. I don't know. But I like I, I like to see Ryback stay as Intercontinental Champion. So, that's something worth mentioning. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. For the WWE and the United States Championship. Why? Why does this need to happen? Why a combination of the WWE and the United States Champion? Let's see what the website says. Prediction. Both superstars retain titles. That's what the website says. Reading over the summary of what this website said about this ch championship match, I, I, first off, this match should never, ever happen. Not when two titles are on the line. Kind of three. There's kind of three titles because the WWE and the World of Weight Championship are technically two titles. But they were just combined into one because WWE logic. So the United States Championship 
Then, uh... Why is this match happening? I just don't understand why. I don't... I don't know why it's happening. And I don't care for it. This is probably going to be my next bathroom break. Because I just don't care about this match. Because... Number one, they're either going to have John Cena win, or number two, something's going to happen to where something, or um, to where um, both superstars, or even one of them is DQ'd, or a count out. Something might happen to where someone's DQ'd, or even both of them are DQ'd, excuse me, and then it goes on to Night of Champions, and then it happens again at Night of Champions. This is a very bad storyline. This is very bad because, number one, it was not planned very well. It was not planned very well. I say that because John Cena had suffered a broken nose. That put him out for like a week and a half, maybe. And then he shows up on Tough Enough and is like, oh yeah, I, 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 I'll accept this challenge. And then Seth Rollins becomes a baby that Thursday on SmackDown. And is like, oh man, face to face. So either, so either John Cena wins both the United States Championship and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which would look very bad on WWE, or, or very high possibility, someone's getting DQ'd. Because I just, I just don't see this happening. I just don't. I don't I don't see this happening at all. I mean this is the usual oh Cena wins thing. So, I don't know. This might this might either number 1 be the last match or the match after this last match on the list, which is surprisingly enough Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. But before I continue with this match, I just want I just want to understand something really quick. John Cena versus Seth Rollins even if it is for the the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and even if John Cena was just nothing. This is not John Cena's time yet. It's just not. I mean, if he was more with the mid card, or, or, or excuse me, if he was more of a main card instead of what he's now, a mid card, then I would understand. But he, he, it's not his time yet. He's yet to even earn a championship or a, a WWE championship match. He's been with the United States Championship ever since um, Fastlane which should have been at WrestleMania. And um, so who knows when John Cena will give up the, the United States title. There might be someone who's able to beat John Cena for the United States Championship. Who knows? Who truly knows? Now, final, or last but not least, the epic rematch. The match that everybody will definitely see because it's like by law. Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Now, now the last time these two fought was, yes, WrestleMania 30. And it, yes, was the night that the streak ended. I say ended like that because... True Undertaker fans believe that it was never ended. And I'm a true Undertaker fan. And it never ended. Not only that, I'm still very disappointed by the way WWE has taken the, that loss. And just shoved it down our throats. And said, get over it. Well...
I I believe that uh, this match number one should have been a no disqualification match because I could see some shit happening. I could see this being out of the ring. Out, or yeah, out of the ring, in the crowd kind of stuff, or on the stage, just, and weapons and whatever, chairs, ladders, tables. This should have been a last man standing match, not just a singles match. I mean, I, I kind of said the same thing at WrestleMania. I say kind of because this was for the streak, and... Of course I was going to choose The Undertaker to win, but that's because it's The Undertaker. Everybody knew that, or everybody knows that The Undertaker could try to um, make a comeback at WrestleMania, but after what WWE shoved down our throats, who really knows? So, SummerSlam of this year, then. Hmm. Well, I'm getting a feeling that this might end in a DQ. I say a DQ because there's no way, there's no way Paul Heyman's going to let Brock Lesnar lose. Fairly. I say there's no way that it's going to happen like that because it's Paul Heyman, number one, and number two, it's WWE. Why would they let their main star get hurt by big old bad Undertaker? After I record this, I'm going to go wash my mouth out with soap. The winner has to be The Undertaker. He did not return at Battleground and ruin Brock Lesnar's WWE World Heavyweight Championship for no reason if he does not win this. That return would have done nothing if The Undertaker loses. And if they're going to do a sting thing during this, I dare them to do it during the match. I dare them. I dare them to put Sting in the middle of the match and ruin Undertaker's uh, Undertaker's win and DQ the Undertaker. So that's really that. I mean, it's been it's been thirty some minutes now. You've heard me rant. You've heard me rage. You've heard me complain about how much WWE sucks. And I may or may not have reactions to this video. I didn't have reactions to last um, to last uh, WrestleMania because I wasn't able to record correctly. Um, so who knows? I might have. I might record reactions or I might not but um, who knows well that's really that then so then uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys Tuesday after Raw and when I do the review and all that bullcrap so yeah